Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of News You Can Use. I'm Ann Baldwin and as you may or may not know after I left my job in broadcasting after many years I started Baldwin Media Marketing which I'm pleased to say has been growing strong now for 20 years now if you can believe that. Well one of the first things that I learned when thinking about starting my own business is that you should have if you don't have a plan. And that's why I have Gary Burdick here. He's a Senior Vice President and Chief Commercial Banking Officer of Simsbury Bank to talk about just that. Gary, welcome to the program. This definitely fits the category, news you can use. <laughs> a lot of people out there thinking about starting their own businesses or maybe have their own businesses. So first of all, why is it important for someone to have a business plan? And it's not only important to have a business plan, it's essential to have a business plan. What a business plan does is it provides the overall direction for the company, for the business. And it includes critical details associated with that business, such as the business objective, the prospective market, the marketing plan, the sales goals, the competitive advantage that that business will have. It also includes the credentials of the individuals who are associated with that business and what it is that they bring to that business. And in addition, it includes projected financial statements and financial information. And most importantly, Anne, it's not a static document. It's a forward-looking document. It's concerned with five-year goals not just the first year of operations or the first 12 months of operation. So it's really got a look forward approach to it. You know, and Gary, you mentioned something that really applies to my experience and that you said it's a fluid plan. Because what my plan looked like 20 years ago when I was going to start my own business and what it's evolved into over the years, night and day, you wouldn't even recognize it. But that's the beauty of thinking the process through and the importance of that. Now, some people out there might say, I want to start my own business, but I don't want to put that much work or that much thought into it. Why is it important? It's critical to have a well thought out business plan because any prospective lender, such as Simsbury Bank, or an investor is going to really analyze that business plan when they make a determination as to whether or not they want to lend to that business or invest in that business. So a critically thought out, well executed business plan is absolutely imperative. And how much work does it take? I mean, does it depend on the business that you're going to go in, in um, to? Or, I mean, is everybody's plan, does it look different? Well, and there are actually, despite or no matter what type of business you're talking about, there are some common essentials associated with every business plan. And I could quickly go through some of those. Sure, if, that'd be great. Uh, first and foremost, we have an executive summary. And the executive summary really details the overall business objectives of that entity. What the qualifications are of management, what their vision statement is, what it is that they bring to the table and what they expect from that business. That's followed by a business analysis, a business analysis describes the value proposition of that company. What are the business goals? What are the sales goals? What are the measurements that are going to be used? What are the metrics that are going to be observed to determine, and the milestones to determine when what success looks like and when success is achieved? There's also an industry analysis that really looks and broadly describes the industry that the business will be in. And it also talks about trends in that industry and any competitive or market intelligence that you might have with respect to who your competitors are. That's followed by a customer analysis. Who are your customers? Mm -hmm. Where are your customers? What are your customers? Why do they buy? Where do they buy? How do they pay? What are their payment habits? So there's an awful lot of information that you need to know about the customers, the demographics, the market demand, and things like that. And to that point, I would think that like what I assumed and where I assumed my customers were in the beginning, once I started to dig into it forcefully on my, in my situation by my business plan, it was like a reality check where I thought my customers were, and more importantly, who I thought they were, was totally different in reality. So this plan, and especially that particular component, forced me to think a little bit differently. So that's, that's, that's one that I have a fond, not so fond memory of. <laughs> well, you, you actually learned an important lesson, and it goes back to what we said just a moment or two ago about the dynamic nature of a business plan. It's not a static document. You don't write it and put it on a shelf. You don't write it and store it in a file on your computer. Right. 
businesses evolve, businesses change, and things are not always what they're expected to be. And the business plan isn't always a straight road to where it is that you're trying to go. So as we talked about, you've got to be able to evolve the business and you've got to be able to modify the business plan. And we, I kind of cut you off in the middle of your list, but this list, you know, is very, very important. So you also need to do the next one on the list, a product analysis. That's right. Um, you really need to take a look at what is it that you're bringing to the marketplace, a product that you're going to sell, a service that you're going to provide. What's unique about your product or your service? What sets you apart? What differentiates you from the customer, from your competition, and and that will apply to your customers? And that's an important component of doing this also. And you look at, are there barriers to entry with respect to my product or service? But really key there is, hopefully there's something that differentiates you and your business from your competitors. That's usually followed by a marketing strategy, probably near and dear to your heart. I can help with that. <laughs> <laughs> so how will you promote the product? What tactics will you use? Where will you promote it? In what avenues will you promote And at what it? cost? And at what cost? How will you distribute it? How will you position it? I mean, so many things there with respect to marketing. And in this day and age, given all of the, the avenues that exist for marketing, which are different than what they were just five or ten years ago, that's also a key component. And there's really only a couple more, Ann. Um, one is uh, management team bios, uh, operating, uh, I should say, management team biographies associated with the people that are running the business and also the owners of the business. Mm -hmm. So what is it that they bring to the mm -hmm. table? And What's an operating unique about agreement them? so that you're, <clears throat> you know, I know that the banking piece of starting a business and a business plan is very important, but so are the legal aspects, you know, filing that LLC, filing the paperwork with the state, making sure that you have an operating agreement so everybody understands what the, the legal logistics of this are going to be as well. So weaving that in there. And and then the final one is the... Well, if I can comment okay. about something sure. that you just said, you brought up another point, which is really wasn't part of what I was going to discuss, but it's key, it's critical. Um, every business should have advisors. Mm. So you should have a CPA, you should have an accountant, you should have an attorney, because that professional advice is invaluable and it helps you steer the course and do it correctly and do it the right way in terms of trying to determine your success. But the last item, near and dear to any banker's heart, whether it's at <laughs> Simsbury Bank or any other bank, is really the financial information. And that really takes three different forms. We should have information related to sales, expenses, and income, usually captured by a profit and loss statement or an income statement. We should have some information about how the business is capitalized via a balance sheet, how much debt is there, how much equity is there. And then lastly, and perhaps most importantly, we really need to have projected cash flow statements because ultimately that's what pays the bank back and that's what pays the return that the investors are looking for. So the bottom line is if you're starting a business and you're looking to borrow money from a credible institution like Simsbury Bank, then you need to do all this. You have to have your you know, financial house and really your business plan in order. What happens if you don't? You can't just walk into a <clears throat> bank and say, hey, I want to open a donut shop, can I borrow some money? No. Well, you could. You wouldn't get very far. <laughs> <laughs> I think your, your uh, probability for success would be pretty modest at that mm -hmm. point. Because how is it that we evaluate what it is that you're trying to do? Right. How is it that anybody, how do you evaluate what it is that you're trying to do if you don't have the plan? Right. And I know when I started and I took, actually took classes and there are a lot of resources out there through the Small Business Asso uh, Association and, uh, you know, if you just go here in Connecticut, there's just so many different folks and you've actually um, done our homework for us and you can cite a couple of those places, sure. you know, SBA and those types of things where people can get help, get information, get guidance. Um, and some of those organizations include retired professionals who have started their own businesses and been so successful that they can enjoy that word retirement. <laughs> That's true, Ann. We frequently refer people to SCORE, and that stands for the uh, um, Service Corps of Retired Executives. And they do an awful lot of uh, counseling and workshops. Um, they do it through chapters across Connecticut. Uh, the Hartford chapter does a uh, business basics uh, seminar once a month. And they also partner with the SBA and the Small Business Administration. So mm -hmm. they're actually an invaluable resource. We also, at Simsbury Bank, will refer people to the Connecticut SBDC, the Small Business Development 
Council. And that's really um, an affiliation with the uh, Connecticut State University system, mm -hmm. with the Small Business Administration, as you mentioned, the SBA, and also with um, the DECD, the Department of Economic yep. and Community Development here in Connecticut. And they do, um, again, they do workshops and seminars. They have a broad range of, of assistance that they can provide to the um, to an entrepreneur or a business owner who's looking not only to prepare a business plan because they have seminars on that, but also how to manage your business and also how to measure the success of your business. So they really offer quite a bit to either uh, an existing business owner, a prospective business owner, or an entrepreneur. Right. And a lot of these are state agencies and the state obviously has a vested interest and wants to see young entrepreneurs and business owners you know grow and succeed and expand because that in my opinion is what's really stirring this economy right now is that and the other thing I'd like to say is you know don't be afraid of the process I mean it sounds like a lot maybe on this particular program it may oh man do I have to do all that work and due diligence yes you do because if you want to be successful in the end but I can also tell you as a small business owner there is nothing more rewarding than creating and having your business survive in my case for 20 years so I think I'm over that hump yes but <laughs> oh yes but <laughs> because remember we said earlier it's dynamic businesses are dynamic businesses aren't static and you probably still have an idea as to where you'd want to take ball but, you know the last time I looked at my business plan you bring up a good point 18 years ago not good not good you've been successful despite that but the reality of it is if the business probably didn't go in the direction that you thought it was going to all. go in or didn't go in the direction and the route that you thought it was going to go in so quite frankly you've still got ambitions and goals to further improve the success of your business and really should update the business plan to reflect that I think I will do that Wow, I guess I got a little reality check in this segment that I didn't anticipate. For free. <laughs> For free. <laughs> Nothing in life is free, but thank you very much. Uh well, I want to thank Gary Burdick of Simsbury Bank so much for joining us as this truly was news you can use. And again, if folks out there want to know more about starting their own business and accessing the professionals who can help you with that, you can go to Simsbury Bank's website at simsburybank.com. And trust me, there's nothing like being your own boss. We want to thank you so much for watching this edition of News You Can Use. Up next, we're going to be talking with Christina Brown, the Assistant Vice President and Cash Manager at Simsbury Bank about just that, cash management. We'll be right back.